I'm Sharon Ryback and I'm back to talk with you a little bit more and today I want to stop talking about the challenges that we're facing in schools and again I'm just going to reiterate some of the discussion topics that I've talked about. Um, one of them was that teaching is a behavior and it's hard to change the behaviors of teachers, that teachers have had a 40-year intern, <laughs> I'm sorry, 40% uh, of their life has been an internship before they've ever even gotten into the classroom to be a teacher, that, you know, we spend a lot of time looking at teaching and watching teaching before we ever get there, and that there are hard behaviors to break. Also that in a standard-based classroom, there's a different kind of expectation to move students along that continuum and that we have to accept that there's a higher level of accountability with that. Um, the other thing is data management, and I hope I've made my point that I think that the capacity of humans, um, teachers, anybody, has been exceeded with the amount of demands related to data management in the classroom. Um, I also then talked a little bit about problem solving and some of the challenges around problem solving. Once you do know what's wrong, how are you going to determine what those problems are and how are you going to um, make rational decisions about how to fix them. So there's lots of things that I think have been barriers to our success. And today I want to talk about some of the things that are, I think, um, well, some of the more positive things about maybe where we could go in the future. If you remember, I talked a little bit about um, this idea of this crevasse in the earth and that everybody over here is uh, currently in school sitting in a desk today um, waiting to see what their teacher is going to say next and on the other side are all these children born today ready and waiting for a new future and ready and waiting to go to school and I want to start talking about ways we can build that future so today my technology don't you just love this that I have a little um, see, I have a little idea over my head. These are all my ideas, and, um, I, you know, you just can't you just want to play with this stuff? Isn't this just amazing? You know, sometimes I have questions, um, and they just spin and spin and spin around my head. And uh, sometimes I just want to put on my mask and pretend it's not all happening. And sometimes I just put on my bunny ears and just have fun. Um, sometimes I get a black eye and I look like I've been in a fight. But today we're just going to worry about the ideas, some of these new ideas and some of the things that I think um, are exciting. And the first one, I'm going to get rid of my little question mark there so we don't have to be annoyed by that. And it doesn't want to go off. Let's see. Go back. Come on, question mark. Go back. All right, let's go up here. Um, is data management. And I think we've all agreed, if you've been listening to me, that we've exceeded our ability to manage uh, data in the classroom. So I'm proposing that we look at a tool that allows teachers to monitor all students in real time because teaching is a real time event and learning takes place over time. And we're trying to watch learning without the time lapse photography that we would use to watch a flower bloom. But we do need to watch that and we need to monitor each step of that process. So with the use of technology, I believe that we can watch the blooming of a student. We can better understand it and thereby, again, use my growth analogy, give students the right dose of water, give them what they need to be successful. Um, there is a group, and I'm going to read this, the name of their um, agency, it's a national agency, it's called the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's a government agency, and it's best known for creating the forerunner to the Internet. And they have been given the task to ramp up educational innovation. And I truly believe if there's an organization that is out there that could do this, this might be it. And you might say to yourself, oh, please, not something at the federal level. Don't get the government involved in this. Let it be a, a business and let it be a, a, an entrepreneurial adventure, which I do believe would probably generate it and make it more um, maybe innovative. However... I want to say that I think the other problem with innovation and with companies is that they tend to get married to their own ideas and they also tend to um, want us to keep rebuying their, t their product. I'm going to give you an example and it's from my mother, she's 97, and she talks about the silk hose that you could buy before World War II 
Um, she said they were very sheer, and she said they wore like iron. She said, as a matter of fact, they wore so much like iron that you had to purchase flesh-colored dye to re-dye the pose so that they would go back to being flesh color because they would wear so beautifully, and they were so fine and so well done that they were run free. Now, um, many of you under 30 probably don't know what hoes are, but, you know, the <laughs> Uh, sorry. Um, but anyway, th you know, the reality is, is that we have come to expect our life to be disposable. Um, and after World War II, we've become a very disposable and unfortunately we're a society that stands for it. We expect things to break. We expect things to fall apart. We expect to have to get the newest. Um, we tolerate everything breaking with the expectation that it's going to be replaced with the new and the better. Um, and so in the case of the technology, I think it's fine that we build a structure that will hold this innovation and then we can add to it. But I think it needs to have a core structure. We're still fighting the Apple, IBM um, platform issues. Um, only have to try to download a an iTunes on the two different platforms and you still see we're struggling with that. And we need to not have that be a barrier in this in this programming for students. So we need that, st that structure to be built on a national level. I believe it's every child's right in this country to have the support of technology um, for their instructional growth. I think it's the right of every student in this country to have it's their God-given right as part of being a citizen of these United States to be able to have the use of this technology be there for their growth and for their learning. And I think we need to start looking at that as something that every student receives. This is no longer an extra or an add-on. It's a part of our lives. Um, in a real ch no child left behind environment with this technology would have all of the content lessons on it. Now, I'm going to say something here that a lot of teachers aren't going to like, but in the reality, in reality, I now believe that the technology owns the content. Um, the teacher owns the pedagogy, the teaching of the content, but the content is owned by the technology. Now, I'm sure that when the textbooks f first came out, teachers were worried that they would be obsolete in favor of textbooks, but we know that that hasn't been the case and it won't be the case with technology either. But if you've ever, you know, if you've used the apps and you've seen the things that are available, um, the representations of content are much more dramatic than any teacher could provide in front of a classroom of students. And it, it goes to greater depth than any student, could, any teacher could provide. So I really do believe that this technology is needs to come the infrastructure needs to come from a, a higher level and that it's this platform will allow for expansion and innovation and places for the entrepreneur to, to, to deliver content um, it would allow for local control of the data and yet it would be built so that the state and federal government could still gather data and we could still determine effectiveness basically um, when I go to the grocery store and I use my debit card, before I can get my groceries in the trunk of my car, my debit card's already been, um, uh, the money's been pulled out of my, my account. And if that can happen, then there's no reason that this structure can't happen for our schools. We'll talk more about how it's going to be used, but then the impact of that, because once that happens, then a whole bunch of other things happen as a result of it. So I'll talk more about that later. But there's no reason that in today's society we can't have that kind of support and data support for our teachers and for our schools if you want the level of accountability that you want. You don't want the accountability, then yeah, we can bring the technology down. But when you want the kind of accountability that you that, that the society is demanding, then you have to be able to support it with that level of technology. The debit I'll call it the debit card technology. You swipe the card and it's immediately withdrawn from your account. And I've even had that happen while I'm in Spain and I'm running my debit card. Uh, the, the technology that's available out there in the world of economics is phenomenal and we need to start bringing that into our schools. It's, it is the right of our students. So we'll talk more a little bit about data later, but I really wanted to bring that to you today and have that conversation. So thank you. Bye.